Hi, this is Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing, Magic, and Mysticism. I uh, just want to talk a little bit today about using magically charged water. Well, I want to start the discussion by talking about water. <laughs> um, the obvious thing, of course, that we all know is we use water uh, to cleanse our physical bodies of impurities. Um, that's really nothing, um, nothing surprising, but when we're talking about metaphysical, spiritual, occult things, we also have to talk about the spiritual cleansing properties of water. For example, uh, in India, the Ganges River is said to have certain healing properties. People go to the Ganges uh, and report uh, miraculous healings. Um, I believe it's associated with the Hindu religion uh, in India. Uh, however, people make uh, really long journeys to bathe in the Ganges and to help them recover from whatever illnesses that they are experiencing. You'll find something similar in Lourdes, France. In Lourdes, they have a spring that um, you know millions of Christian pilgrims go to each year to go and drink and bathe in the spring. And there's been um, a whole bunch of uh, miracles associated with uh, that particular spring. Uh, it's also Lourdes, France is the site of a lot of um, Marian uh, apparitions in the past. So when we're talking about Lourdes, we're also talking very much about the, um, the Catholic faith and uh, the visitation of the Virgin Mary. Uh, we also, when we're talking about water, we talk about, also in the uh, Christian faith, we talk about baptism. And in the, in the ritual of the baptism, one uh, is led by the clergy and be dunked in the water, and that is a um, symbol of having your sins cleansed of your soul and making a commitment to Jesus Christ. But I, I want to mention that, not that, that Christianity is the focus of our particular video, but to kind of show that you'll find this in different religions, this whole aspect of water and why it's important in the cleansing. Uh, we'll find also bathing, uh, in the in hoodoo, whenever you want to have your uh, aura cleansed or to try to program your aura for specific intent, you take baths in specific herbs, you say certain prayers, and by doing that sort of thing, you're actually changing your spiritual makeup in order to, for, to obtain protection or money or that sort of thing. So when we're talking about water, let's talk about charging water, because this isn't anything new either. You talk about Catholic priests, what they'll do is they will um, say a prayer, a blessing over the water and, and have normal water become holy water. And what the priest does is he takes that water and he will uh, use it. Um, I went to a funeral. Um, this past Friday, and sure enough, uh, the priest came and uh, at the funeral he was sprinkling the holy water around. They also use the holy water after blessing for when they are undergoing the rite of exorcism. It will sprinkle the person who is supposedly possessed by the holy water as a way of uh, potentially driving that demon out. You'll find it in other ways too. You'll find it in the religion of Wicca. You'll find that uh, Wiccans, whenever they're doing their rites, they'll have the water, they'll put the salt in. Of course, that's to symbolize the element of earth and the element of water. Then they will charge the water by calling upon the Lord and Lady or whatever goddess that they are adhering to, 
to charge the water. And they will use that water for a specific purpose of um, what they do is they take the water after being charged and they will sprinkle it in a circle around themselves in order to protect their space from any baneful spirits or anything unexpected, along with other ways of creating the circle, of course. But that's one particular way of using charged water protection. And even if you don't look at Wicca, you look at Reiki, the healing art of Reiki, the Japanese healing art of energy healing. I've made charged water before using just common water, embedding Reiki symbols in it, the magical uh, symbols of Reiki, placing my hands on the water, and it will change the water on a on a chemical level because you can taste it before the charging and you can taste it after the charging and will have a surprisingly different taste. It has more of a metallic taste. There is something that the energy is actually doing to the molecules and the water that is a changing on some level. And you can prove to yourself that it actually is charged water because you can actually do something, do some things with it. Um, I've created the water and I've drank the water, uh, kept it in my fridge, and then whenever I get in kind of a bad space, uh, don't feel too well, maybe struggling a little bit uh, emotionally for a brief time, what I'll do is I'll take that water out of the fridge, drink it, and that water still has that energy in it, and it will change things, you'll actually feel it, subtle energy. But I don't want to get too far off into Reiki. So let me tell you, if you're interested, how to charge water. And again, I'm going to give you some guidelines. I don't give you everything. I don't spoon feed everything to everybody because I believe that there is a spirit of experimentation and trying these things out without me giving you everything. I want everybody to... Uh, actually have fun and play with these things and see what works for you and what doesn't and please discard what doesn't work for you and hey if you figure out a way to do something that I can't please let me know <laughs> so that I can try it myself maybe we'll both succeed but in any case this is how one if you look at the different ways of charging across culturally this is the way you charge water for one, you have to come up with a specific intent. You don't just really charge water to charge water. What are you going to do with it? Okay. What is the reason why you're going to work with it? I can tell you um, some general objectives that work well for it. One is healing. Another is protection. Um, another may be the cleansing of one's aura, spiritual energy around you. Those are the three main ones. If you want to try other intents, that's fine, but I'll be sure that you have an intention in mind in what context you want to use your water in. Okay, so how would you go about doing it from that point once you have your intent? Okay, so you get, um, let's say, a glass of water you want to charge. Um, one thing that's known in classical metaphysics is that we have we have certain hands that do certain things. For example, if you ever you wanted to project energy, you would use your dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so I would use my right hand to project energy. And if I wanted to receive energy, then I would use my left hand. So use your non-dominant hand for receiving your dominant hand for projecting. Now if you're left-handed, it's different. Your dominant hand would be left and you'd be projecting with your left and you would be receiving with your right. And again, if you're not sure this is you, if you don't fit in this category, please experiment and use the hand that feels right for you in these cases. But the, this rule kind of works for the vast majority of people. So you have your glass of water, you have your intent. Um, 
whatever that intent may be. So let's say it's something like um, I want to uh, charge this water uh, in order to cleanse my house of all negative energy. So that's your intent. You'd have your water. If you're right-handed, take your right hand, put it over the glass. And now you need to come up with a specific verbalized intent. You can do it one of two ways. You can just use yourself because your own personal energy, your own will, because we ourselves, you know, Christian, Christians say that we are built in the likeness of, made in the likeness of God. Another way of saying it, we're connected to the universal powers of the cosmos. However you say it, we are, in some sense, we have a divine spark within us that gives us an inherent power that cannot be taken away from us. So we can charge it on our own to some degree. You take your right hand, you put it over your water, and you say that um, something like, um, I charge this water um, by the universal power that flows within me to X, whatever your intent is, whatever context you want to use it in, protection or whatever. If you want to do it the second way, if you have a, a deity in mind, if, you can use that. You can use Jesus' name. You can use uh, whatever power or deity that you want to use. Um, say, I, I charge this water uh, by the power of Hecate uh, in order to use this water to cleanse, cleanse me of all negative energy, to cleanse my aura of all negative spirits that may be attached, something along those lines. Once that you have your intent, once you have your hand over the water, you're using your will, may or may not be using it with the power of the deity that you're invoking. Once you put all of that together and you're serious about it, Then, at that point, you have your water, and you can decide what to do with it. You can, um, the first example, about the house. Once you have your charged water in your container, walk around, sprinkle it around your house. Sprinkle the walls, a little bit on the floor, with the intent, while sprinkling, of cleansing your home of any negative entities, spirits, or negative thought forms that may be forming uh, in the house. If you wanted to use it um, in the other way I explained, you can have your container of water and you can sprinkle it around your body, around your aura. By doing that, because now you have you had power, you had water, which was inert. You put them together, you have power water. And now that, that water is such of a nature that it has a very high vibrational energy. It will most likely cause and transform any negative energy in your aura and possibly dislodge any um, negative spirits that may be attached to you. So there you go. Of course, if your intent is healing, because that's could always be the intent, charging water, you can keep it in container and put it in your fridge if you want. Drink it when you're feeling not so well. Maybe a friend's feeling bad. Maybe, maybe give him some of your water when, you, when he comes over. Oh, I want a beer. Okay, how about, you know, maybe you don't need to be drinking so much. How about drink some of my charged water? There you go. You'll feel better. <laughs> Um, you can also, if you're, after you make your water, if you just want to test your water, for example, you can, the next day, you can take your water and uh, if it's healing water, you know, drink it to see if you can actually feel the effects. 
because sometimes we may be so hyped up in the charging, we be feel, we're be we feeling good. It may not be the best idea to drink the water right then and there because you want to kind of break the state. You want to make sure that you kind of want to move away from that particular state and then use it in order to test it uh, maybe the next day. Kind of see how how successful you were in charging your water. So, and, I, and I believe in that. I believe in not just assuming that everything is correct and turned out well, but actually taking it and testing it to see if it actually works. Um, I don't believe in deluding ourselves into thinking that something is, was successful when it wasn't because it's too easy to just be wrapped up in fantasy. So again, we need to test our work. Well, in any case, that is it for water, charging water, and how to use the charge water. Thank you for listening to me once again. Please subscribe and like, and I hope to see you in a future video.